Yeah. Thank you, and welcome to presenting the competence engineer. The presentation skills you're about to receive today were developed by Jerry Weissman. Jerry Weissman te teaches presentation skills as his business. He runs a three-day class and charges $5,000 per person for that class. For the next 40 minutes, you will receive the essence of what he teaches. And if you were to attend his class, one of the things you'd, what you would learn is that if you want the audience to listen, then you have to get the audience's ear. And by that, you need to make eye contact, you need to articulate your message, and you need to reach out to your audience. Let's take each one in turn. You need to make eye contact. By that, he means you want to have a personal conversation with a person in the audience. You want to move to another person and have it a sentence or a phrase conversation with that person. And you want to go to the next person and have that conversation. You want to draw your audience in to your presentation by engaging in eye contact with each of them. Now, as opposed to that, You'll see May presenters do something very different. For example, you might see something like this. The presentation skills you're about to, to hear were developed by Jerry Weissman. Uh, his business is developing. You often see people looking at their slides, trying to look at you, but really being focused on their slides. Alternatively, if it's a big presentation like this, you'll often see people do this, teaching presentation skills is his business. He teaches a three-day class where their eyes are focused on the teleprompter. And there's one other case that maybe you fall into, or maybe you just see it in some of the presentations you watch, where the person's eyes are shifting continuously. The presentation skills you're about to see were developed by Jerry Weisman. He teaches a three-day class, very shifty looking. <laughs> But you, from now on, will make eye contact with individuals in the audience. And you will present a phrase to each person and move on to the next and engage with them. And articulate. We all know this one. We want to change the volume of our voice. We want to change the tone quality of our voice. And we want to pause at different times. So instead of saying, these presentation skills were developed by Jerry Weissman, teaching is his business, he runs a three-day class and charges $5,000. We want to say that in the next 40 minutes, you have the opportunity to get the essence of that class. A friend, a friend was telling me that there was a psychology study done recently where they had a PhD student present a presentation that he had created it was one in which he was a subject matter expert, presented to an audience, and immediately afterward, they had a used car salesman come up and give the exact same presentation to the audience, to the same audience. At the end of the presentations, the audience was asked, who is the expert? What do you think the audience said? Over 80% of them thought the used car salesman was the expert. Why is that? Because the used car salesman knows how to articulate the message. He knows how to change the volume of his voice. He knows how to change the quality, tonal quality. And he knows how to pause. The third thing is to reach out. You'll often see a presentation where the presenter will stand up on stage with his arms in front of him, or his arms locked to the podium. And he'll be saying, the presentation skills you're about to, to hear were developed by Jerry Weissman. He runs a class that takes three days and charges $5,000. And as opposed to that, from now on, we hope that you will reach out to the audience. That you will explain that in the next 40 minutes, you can receive the essence of this presentation. Eye contact, articulate, and reach out. Let's step back a second. Let's step back a second and talk about creating a presentation. 
just so we have some completeness to this. Three things to think about when you're creating a presentation. What does the billing say? So if you're doing a presentation in an audience like this, a seminar for example, there'll be some kind of billing, some write-up in the, in the uh, trade show guide that'll talk about what you're saying. You are expected to say what, what's said there. But it's just the same if you say to a bunch of your friends, hey, let's go have a design review. If you say, let's go have a design review, they expect you to have a design review. They don't expect you to go off talking about something else. So what the billing said. The second thing is what the audience wants to hear. If you happen to go to, if you happen to be presenting at an Obama rally and you start talking about all the great things that McCain is doing, your audience is probably not going to be very receptive. They might even start walking out on you. So while the billing might have said you're going to talk about politics, you also want to know what the audience wants to hear. And finally, what do you want to tell them? Because you're giving this presentation for a reason. You want to persuade somebody of something. It may be you want to persuade them that this is the right way to do a design, or it may be you want to persuade them that this particular point that Obama made is the right one for now. Whatever the case may be, those are the three things you want to consider before making your presentation. Okay, now let's talk about the presentation. We want to get it off to a good start, and in order to do that, you have to feel confident. One of the ways many people feel confident before walking up on stage is they say to themselves, the audience is going to love this. They're just going to really enjoy what I have to say. They're going to walk out of here saying, I learned something. I enjoyed that. Say that to yourself a couple times, and, when, and it'll help you get some of the butterflies out of your stomach and make you feel more confident. From there, walk smartly, directly, up to the front of the room, up to the front of the stage, up to the front of the podium, whatever the case may be. Don't run, don't trip on the stage, don't slouch. Just smartly, directly, walk up there. When you get there, just before you reach the podium or the front of the, of the, of the room, maybe you want to take a deep breath, let it out. That sometimes helps people. Do not say, testing, one, two, three, can you hear me now? Any of those things. Ahead of time, make sure your audio video equipment works. We had, uh, we had quite a bit of work on our audio video equipment here ahead of time to make sure that it would be proper for you. And go right into the opening hook. In our case, the opening hook was the idea that you did not have to sit in a class for three days or spend $5,000, that you were going to get the essence of that in the next 40 minutes. Describes the presentation, draws you in. Okay, that's a good start. How do we keep it going? Well, you're going to be making presentations where you will have lots of information on your slides. And you'll go through that presentation, and by the end of the presenting it, you'll know exactly what you meant, but the people in the audience may be thinking, what's this really all about? So at the end of the slide, you may have to net it out. And the easiest way to net it out is typically just to read the title. At the end of the slide, you may just want to read the title. Now another thing for keeping it going is to have verbal transitions to your next slide. To, at the end of one slide, introduce the next slide. It looks kind of professional, i got to say. So let's do both of these. So these are two things you may want to do to keep the presentation moving, to keep it going. But what you don't want to do is those little annoyances. 